Welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina, and today we are going to look at the brand new released colors of the year. And I'm gonna be very honest with you. I like some and I dislike others. Follow me. First and foremost, Benjamin Moore, one of the bigger paint companies, one that is used probably in 90% of my project. Well, I'm exaggerating, maybe 70% of the project is has just released our color and that color is called blue nova now do i like blue nova i just don't i'm sorry i don't like blue nova let's look at these photos i don't know if you guys agree or disagree let me know sound off below i find it to be too bright i'm i'm happy that color is back because i think it's fundamental in design but i am unhappy with how bright it is and it's just in your face so here it is in a bedroom paired with rust. I don't mind it in the office so much, but honestly, this is if if I, for five minutes, and then I'm like, get rid of the blue, get rid of it, move away. Forget the half wall and the blue. I mean, that's just like a no and a no, a no, no. So in summary, Benjamin Moore didn't hit it out of the park for me, but that's just me. Uh, if some of you like blue, you know, don't, don't hate the uh, messenger. I love the messenger, in fact, because the messenger really loves you guys. And I'm really proud to have you guys as part of my life. I think of you as part of my life, and I hope you guys feel that as well. So why did I not like the Benjamin Moore? Well, it's a mid-tone blue with red undertones. And to me, it's just too blue. However, the reason Benjamin Moore went with such a wild color is to cut and end the streak of neutrality, which I appreciate. So, you know, my hat's off for pushing the envelope. Speaking of color, if you guys are lost as to what color to paint your home or what furniture pieces to choose or just need advice, you can certainly book a Zoom consultation with me in the description section below. My Zoom link is there and I have had the best conversations with you guys. I've learned about how you guys live and what I have found most interesting about my Zoom calls is that the people who call me are just like me. So there's like little Ninas and little Ninos everywhere. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for the honor of always watching, always being here and being such an advocate of the channel. The next paint company I'm gonna talk about, my absolute favorite, definitely one of my favorites and probably used in 30% of the projects because of the fact that it is more expensive. And Ferro and Ball really is a leader in paint companies in terms of quality, in terms of color curation. They are the high, high standard and I love them. And this year, Ferro and Ball is doing something entirely different. They did not release a new color, which is very unusual. What they did do though, is that they have, and I thought this was genius, the methodology behind how to use paint and mix them together. Let me explain. There's no actual color, but there is the use of different sheens in the same room. Mixing finishes is the new 2024 rule that is happening. You heard it here first, it's happening. So what does that mean? It means doing completely flat walls, in this case, in this kitchen, to give you an example. So the walls are absolutely flat and guess what? The countertop or the protruding little island is in high gloss. So mixing the different finishes is what Ferron Ball is recommending. And Ferron Ball knows what goes on in the industry and this could be a new trend. I might have to try this out and really share my personal experience with it. Here's something else that I found very interesting. This is again, Ferron Ball who are mixing their finishes. They are not giving away any particular colors. They're saying, use our colors, use all of them. Use the ones you like, but mix it up. So the top half of this wall is in a high gloss and the bottom half is absolutely flat paint. I wanna know what you guys think of this concept. Is it a good one? Is it a bad one? Are you gonna use it? What do you think? Other than recommending mixing paint finishes, Ferro and Ball is now recommending, are you ready for this? Clay tones. So this is also a trigger. What does that mean? Well, they are predicting that clay tones are going to be huge in 2024. I am in love with this recommendation because I think this is the perfect combination of everything, meaning pick a color that you love from Ferro and Ball, which I love clay, and use them in different sheets. And look what's happened. You've got a room 
that looks like it's two-tone, but in reality, it's the same tone, but with different sheens. I think this is really fun, and I think this is a really great way to bring visual interest into your home without having the dual-colored, sort of dated look. Here's another example of a Faro and Ball color called Oxford Stone. It's behind this headboard, and I think it's extremely chic and works really well in multiple types of rooms and designs and styles. But now I'm going to announce the Pantone color of the year. You guys know this is the most important color by the most important group. I call it group because Societe, because that's French. I don't know why I went to French. We're in America, pardon. Uh, one of the biggest trend predictors, the biggest trend predictor in fashion and in color, obviously, is Pantone. And what Pantone says, even Anna Wintour listens to, so you guys wanna perk your ears and listen to me, this is the new color of 2024. Peach fuzz. That's right, she's peachy and she's gorgeous. I actually love peach fuzz. So this is bright, I get it. One thing that you guys can do which I love doing is if I like a color, but it's too much for me, I cut it by 50%. And the way that you can do that is you take the paint sample and you say, or whenever you purchase it, you say, I want the Pantone color of the year peach fuzz, but I want it at 50%. What does that mean? Well, all paint companies do this. You can make it 25% lighter. You can make it 50% lighter. I personally would go somewhere between 25 and 30% lighter on this color. It's a little bit too peach, for an entire room, but I love the color. I think it's a great, great entrance back into color, a great segue, a great transition, a great way to introduce color back into your home that's warm, that's somewhat earthy, and that will speak to you. So let's look at more examples of this peach tone and how you can use it. I really like it in this room. I don't know, and you know I don't like blue. You guys know I don't like blue, but this peach and that blue, to me are perfection. So if you like colors, which a lot of us do, this is definitely the way to go. Other examples include this living room with the peach walls. I like it. Again, I would go probably 30, even 50% lighter on this color, but I love peach. I've uh, had peach rooms, but I redo my room so often that I think that was three years ago at a peach office. It's now white, but maybe it'll be peach again. Who knows? Peach fuzz might be in my office. We also have a living room that's peach. You guys get it. We also have a baby nursery that's peach, which I think is great. Great instead of pink for a girl. And I would even do peach for a boy. I don't like to discriminate against colors. In fact, not that long ago, I would say probably in the 17th, 18th century, when boys were born, they were dressed in pink. So there's no reason to discriminate. A peach room nursery for a boy or girl to me looks great. By the way, mixing the peach with the terracotta, as you see in this last photo is chef's kiss. Guys, which color? If you had to choose one color, if someone put a gun to your head and said, you gotta pick a color now, which of these is it gonna be? I wanna know. And I can't wait to see you guys again on this channel. I love you guys. I really appreciate all of your comments. I read them all. I respond to the majority of them. So if you've got a question and you've got something to say, please say it and don't forget to subscribe.